I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and today we're on week one of our mystery Halloween 2022 quilt. It's called Boo Crew, and I'm gonna be sewing this with you over four weeks. You can pick up your Boo Crew quilt kit at fatquartershop.com. You can also download the fabric requirements and the free pattern for part one today. This quilt is all about a witch's lair and her creepy companions. Part one is about her accessories. She's not going anywhere without her broom and hat. The fabric featured is Too Cute to Spook by Me and My Sister Designs and Bella Solids from Moda Fabrics. I'm gonna be using Aurafil 2600 thread to piece it. We also have a matching Boo Crew cross stitch so you can stitch along with us for even more spooky sewing. Download your free pattern for part one at fatquartershop.com and then go ahead and cut all of your fabrics from your kit. And what we did is we took an 18 inch design board, cut all our fabrics and labeled them with our alpha bitties. And on page two is gonna be instructions for the hat and page three and four are going to be instructions for the broom. We're gonna go ahead and start with assembling our hat. So let's get started on that. By doing that, what I'm gonna do is move my design board a little bit out of the way. And when I'm looking at my pattern, I am going to go ahead and do a flying geese. And I'm gonna do three other units that have corner squares because those are all similar steps. So I can just pull the fabric by looking at M. And I need two Fs. From there, what I'm going to do is draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of all of my fabric F squares. And I'm gonna do that using a friction pen. Friction pen ink will disappear when you press on it later. And from here, I'm gonna use some glue to glue down my pieces. You can also use pens for that step if you would like to. So for here, I'm gonna just place it just like you see it. And I'm just gonna put three little dots of this glue. It's called seam align glue, but you can also use a pen. So I'm gonna leave that. Now I need to put a fabric I on the top right of an L. So I just take the L off and then take an I square. And I need to draw a line on the wrong side of all of them, but on this step, I only need two. So I'm gonna just draw a line on two real quick. And with a pattern like this that has a lot of detail, it is pretty important to label your fabric so you don't accidentally put like the wrong square on the wrong thing. Now I'm gonna go to K and this one will go on the left. So I'm just following the images. You can also read all the instructions, but corner squares, the most important thing is to just get it right on there where you don't see the black behind the purple. And if I turn this over, you don't see the purple behind the black. And then we have one more. I'm just gonna kinda keep these together. Pull a J, and then that has an F on the top right. So I'll just pull one of these. Super easy. Now, what I'm going to do to save time is I'm going to stitch directly on these lines using Aurifil color 2600. You don't wanna use a white white when you're sewing with this, but you also don't wanna use something too dark. So we found 2600 works the best and just stitch directly on these lines, trying to stay on the line as much as possible. You'll notice I sewed all of these together without cutting my thread apart, and that is called chain piecing. And what I'm gonna do now is cut a quarter inch away from my stitched line. So I'll put a Creative Roots ruler, a quarter inch line, and trim. So here are the four pieces we cut. On the very first piece, we are gonna make a flying geese. And so what I'm going to do is use the quick press seam roller to press this so that I don't have to go all the way to the iron before I add the right side to the flying geese. And so I've just pressed that, and now I'm gonna use my glue to add the other side. We're gonna stitch directly on that line, and then we will iron all of our pieces at one time. Trim 
trim a quarter inch away, and now we'll go to our iron. So now what I'm gonna do to make it easy for myself is just place my piece that I sewed on top of the pattern where it is so that I can follow my pressing arrows as I go. So this first one, we're gonna to press towards the purple and I'm going to set my seam. That just means placing your iron for about five seconds and then press towards the purple and I put the iron right on that seam and press it down. And then I'm gonna put my clapper so that it'll get nice and flat. My second piece, we also press towards the purple. So just do that same thing and then put it under your clapper. And then the third piece, we're gonna to press towards the black. Now, when you're pressing towards a bigger piece like this, if you just start pressing, you might get a crease. So I like to finger press that down and get the weight of that fabric down with my fingers before I press. And then my last piece also presses towards the black. So do that same thing. And then now we can start building our hat. And what I'm going to do is start right here. I'm gonna take the first piece we used, which is our flying geese, and then below it is our second piece. And then we're gonna add our fabric G rectangle is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna put the flying geese right sides together and pin this very side. And then I'm gonna also pin at the top. I'm gonna change the foot on my machine to a quarter inch foot with a guide and we're gonna stitch down here with a quarter inch seam. You can either go to your iron or you can use your quick press seam roller and just set your seam, press to one side, which you're pressing towards your flying geese. And that's what's great about the Fat Quarter Shop patterns is it tells you exactly which way to press. And then we'll add the fabric G right here. Just put right sides together. And again, pin at the beginning and the end. And we're gonna stitch with a quarter inch seam and we'll be right back. So from here, I'm also gonna just set my seam with the seam roller and press. Now you can use an iron at this point or the seam roller. To me, it's a little bit easier to use the seam roller to build the block and then do an all over press at the end because it has so many pieces. So now we're at this step. So we're gonna put this here and then we're gonna add the third piece we made and the fabric D rectangle. So even though this block has a lot of pieces, if you keep them labeled on your design board, it's gonna make it really easy because it's kind of like paint with numbers. You just follow your pictures. And I do love to pin, so I do recommend pinning. And this should line up right here. Luckily it does, and we'll press. And then just keep building your block. I'm right here. And I think it's, it's fun to do a pattern that's written really well because you can just see where to go. Now to save time, we can also do this next step, which takes the fourth corner square piece that we did and add a fabric R rectangle. So you can go ahead and do that at the same time. Now from here, I am going to stop and use the iron. So this one, we're gonna to press towards the purple. And since we had just used the seam roller over here, just press nice and gentle, don't rock your iron. And then this piece, you're gonna to press towards your rectangle that's white. When you're working with the white and black fabric, pull right here and just make sure you cannot see your thread. And I can't see my thread, so I'm using the perfect color. But if I was using a black or a white, it might show up on the other fabric. So we're gonna keep building our block and we're on the very last step of the witch's hat. And we're going to add a fabric in rectangle at the very bottom. But before that, we're gonna place fabric C rectangles 
to the left and right. So this is our very last step. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you a trick on how to get these to line up. Now earlier, I did that right here without doing this step. This is a tip if you want to get this to line up perfectly without having to guess. You can mark a quarter inch there, a quarter inch there, put these right sides together, and then I'm gonna pin on the right side. And then right here, I'm gonna look at these and I'm gonna get it lined up right where they touch. And I'm gonna pin right there. And it matches. You can finger press this a little bit and then use your seam roller. And then we're gonna add the left and the right first. So I'm gonna just pin those at the same time. I think pinning and cutting and sewing with a quarter inch seam that's accurate, it's gonna give you the best results. So sometimes when you don't pin, I or sometimes when I don't pin, I feel like my blocks come out um, a little bit wavy. Now from here, what I'm going to do is just press right here because that's where I'm adding and then I can press the rest of this in a second. So from here, I'm just going to press right here Now we're gonna move to the broom, and when we do that, we're gonna do all our corner squares at one time like we did before, and all of our straight stitching at one time. Now, what I wanted to show you is on the fabric P, you want your stripes to go this way, and then the Q, you want it to go that way, but the skinnier side up. And that's gonna make your broom all go the same direction. So what I would do is take a screenshot of this print it out, and then that will show you exactly how to cut the P and the Q. So we're gonna make one of these, so we're gonna take a fabric Q, only one of them, there are two fabric Qs, you're gonna take only one. So we're gonna add a fabric I on the top left and the bottom left. We're gonna put them right there, and I'm just gonna add a couple dots of glue. You could also use straight pins. This is just something I have been doing recently that really helps me go a little bit faster in my sewing room. So that's this step, I'll put it right there. And then we're gonna take our fabric P and we're gonna add an F and two I's. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put the glue down. And I am using a little bit too much glue, but that's kind of what I've been doing at home is using a lot. So put that one down and then your eyes. So I've got my fabric F and my fabric eyes. And then I'm gonna look at the last page and that's all that we can do right now on the corner squares. This one we can do in a little bit. So for here, what we're gonna do is put our open toe foot on the machine and stitch directly on the lines. And now I'm gonna to switch to my quarter inch foot and go ahead and do steps that have straight stitching before I go iron. So I'm gonna to need to put a B with my O and this one, it's super long and so you definitely wanna pin. If you don't pin, I feel like the front and the end are gonna be wavy. So just pin at the bottom and the top and then to pin in the middle, pull 
and just put a lot of pins in. And then I notice over here I can sew an E and a Q together. So I'm going to take my E and my Q. And then I'm going to sew these two seams with a quarter inch seam and then we're going to get the iron out. And then I'm going to cut apart my seam right here with a little string blade that I have on my machine. So I'm going to take these four pieces and we're going to iron. But before I do that, I do need to trim a quarter inch away on these little pieces. So I'm going to follow the arrows in my pattern. We're going to press towards the purple. First, I'm going to set the seam. That's just putting your iron over the seam nice and gentle. And this is going to be harder because the purple is larger than the orange. So I'm going to finger press that down a little bit so I don't get a crease in my fabric. And you'll notice I put the very edge of the iron right on that seam. And then these two, we're going to press towards the stripe. So same thing, set your seam and then just finger press it down first. Just to get the weight down. And then these, we're going to also press towards the stripe. And this one we're going to press towards the purple. So what I'm going to do is go back in order and figure out where we left off. So we have got this strip going and then we're going to add a B to the top of the orange and pin. And I'm just going to go now in order of the pattern, but I've gotten a couple of the steps out of the way that could be done all at the same time and that makes it really nice and efficient. So I've got this part done. We've already done this. So put this here. We're gonna pull this piece right here and we're gonna add the fabric S right here. And same thing. We're gonna just add and use pins here. We've already done this step, but we can now go here because we have E and Q together already. And then we have this one already. And you can see that our stripes are going the same way. And you can either guess or you can mark a quarter inch at these intersections. And then when you put this right sides together, we're going to pin at the left and the right. And then I'm going to match that up. And I've been using glue when I've been adding corner squares. And I'm not using glue when I use the quarter inch seams. And then to save time, we're gonna do all three of these seams at one time. keep ironing using those same techniques following the arrows on the pattern. This one we're going to press toward the rectangle and the square and we'll see if my little tip worked and if everything lined up. And not only did it line up here, somehow all my stripes lined up. We definitely did not plan that, but that looks so awesome. I'm so excited. And then this one we press towards the white. And then we'll keep building our block. So you can see sometimes I iron in between, sometimes I use my seam press roller. It really depends on the size of the piece and the number of pieces. So from here we're gonna add H to the top and bottom. And I'll go ahead and pin both sides. And those are going to be quarter inch seams. But then over here, 
On this one, we do need to add a fabric A corner square. So I've got my fabric A, draw a line, and add that corner square. So I will have to change feet while I'm doing this. And again, where you place this is really important because if you have it placed, for example, like that, it's gonna come out really bad. So just place it where you really want it to be. And I'm gonna sew with a quarter inch seam and then I'm gonna sew this one directly on the line. And before we go to the iron, we're gonna trim this corner square off. So on both of these steps, I'm gonna to press towards the purple. And again, set my seam. And press each to one side. And then we're gonna have three pieces at the end of this. And we just need to sew those three pieces together to form the broom. So to form the broom, we've got our left unit we have this unit and then this one. And all of our stripes go the same way. And right here, these seams need to match and these seams need to match. So I'm gonna use my little trick with my quarter inch line and I'm gonna put a little quarter inch mark right here, right here. And then on the other side, So what you can do is put these right sides together and I'm not sure if these are gonna meet up the first time, we're gonna see. And then from here, we're gonna try to line up those drawn lines. So put your pin in the line on each piece at that quarter inch intersection. Let your fabrics sit straight up and pin. Do the same thing on the left side. Now you don't have to do this. This is just a tip that I do so I don't have to unpick on camera. And then we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam. And to me, it doesn't matter if you sew with this on top or this, either one will work. We're gonna switch to a quarter inch foot for the last two steps. And they match. Put your pin in those two intersections right at that quarter inch mark. So again, left, right, and then your other seams. So I've got the pin right in that quarter inch mark and then right in that quarter inch mark. And we'll sew the quarter inch seam. So we'll set this seam, press this one towards the broom, turn it over, set this seam, press towards the handle. And then here, just nice and flat. Thanks for joining me for the Boo Crew Part 1 Free Mystery Quilt Along. Make sure to check out Part 2 next week. See you then.